Hello boys and girls. It's currently coming to you from my living room in South Berwick, Maine for Karen Reads. My book today is written by Keo Kalia Yang who is Hmong American. I believe that means that she's from Laos. Um, she's written lots of books, both for kids and for adults. She lives in Minnesota, where I used to live. The illustrator is Keo Lei, and she lives in Vietnam and she is an illustrator and a painter and an author and keeps very busy. Okay, the one beautiful thing. My grandmother is so old, no one knows how old she is. Not me, not my big sister job, not our cousin Lee. My father waits patiently when we try to guess her age. He is grandma's ninth and youngest child, and even he does not know how old she is. We know that my grandma was born on the other side of the world, across a wide ocean. My grandma came from a time and a place where creatures lurked in the jungles waiting to chase unwary children. She told us that she once looked into the gleaming eyes of a tiger and felt its hot breath on her face. I believe I forgot to show you a picture of the family with the grandmother. There you go. All right, moving on in the most beautiful thing. By the time I was born, my grandmother already had an old woman's face. Her skin was soft but dry like paper, and in her mouth was a single tooth. Grandma said, It is the only thing standing strong in my mouth, the final tooth that my mother and father gave to me. I asked to see a picture of her parents. She said, Minab, they lived in a time long before the Hmong learned to take photographs. She pointed to her heart. The only picture I have of them is here. So I imagine that that is how she imagines them, sees them in her mind or her heart. The luckiest of the grandchildren got to help take care of Grandma. Lee got to wash Grandma's clothes by hand at the bathroom sink with sweet smelling pink soap. Dog got to wash grandma's soft brown back in the bathtub with a soapy cloth.
and me, I got to clip her fingernails and toenails while Grandma sat on her favorite stool in the light from the window. I can still feel the roughness of Grandma's heels in my hand, the thickness of her toenails in between my fingers. I can see the bottoms of her feet, thick and brown and broken, deep cracks filled with dirt from long ago and far away. Grandma told me that her mother and father died when she was a little girl. Grandma was just a child herself, but she had to take care of her two younger brothers and a baby sister. I looked up at my grandma from the place where I sat at her feet and asked her, but how did you get food for them? Grandma said, I didn't, didn't find enough food. We lived always with hunger eating us on the inside. All my life with her, even with just her one tooth, Grandma never said no when we offered her something to eat. The ice cream truck was singing its song from down the street. I looked underneath the couch for quarters. There were none. So I got ice cubes from the freezer. I offered one to Grandma in my red plastic cup. She smiled at me. When I wanted a new dress to wear on the first day of third grade, my mother said she did not have enough money. She found some nickels and a dime in her purse and offered them to me. I bought peppermint candies from the neighborhood grocery at the corner of our block. When I got home, I offered one to grandma on the palm of my hand. She smiled at me. At the round table with its shaky legs, I used my spoon to mix and mix in the center soup bowl we all shared. There were no pieces of meat, only bones and soft greens. My father said, the price of meat is too high at the market, me not. I found a thick chunk of bone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, I'm all right. <gasps> and offered it to Grandma on my spoon. She smiled at me. Well, that was exciting. We had plenty of meat only when we celebrated Hmong New Year with our aunts, uncles, and cousins. The old table was heavy with whole boiled chickens, more than our families could ever eat. 
after dinner, our bellies full. My cousins and I sat on the carpet around Grandma as she told stories. She always began, it was a long time ago and I was just a girl. As we listened, our eyes grew round. Grandma twisted her fingers one over the other to show us what the hands of the podge song, Jungle Spirits the Size of Children, looked like. She taught us how to listen for the cries of the fearsome Pemindere vase by holding our breath until our hearts pounded in our ears. We were always sad when Aunt Chu called, time for dinner, time to clean up, excuse me, time to clean up. On a cold day, when the sun blew onto the window panes, and the light was dim. I asked Grandma about the dirt in her feet. She told me she didn't have shoes when her parents died. She went shoeless to the mountains to tend to the family field. She ventured into the jungle to look for wild roots, bamboo shoots, and mushrooms. And one day she was chased by a tiger. As she fled, her bare feet broke open on the fallen branches and she still ran, blood and dirt mixing into clay with each step. I squeezed her feet in my arms and pulled them close to my heart. A hug for the hard road she'd walked to get to me. Each year, cutting my grandma's nails went faster because I grew stronger and bigger and more able. Each year, Grandma's feet felt smaller and smaller in my hands and my lap. Her stories, too, slowed down with the passing years. The pauses between her words grew long. Sometimes, as Grandma was looking for the words she's, she lost to the years, I grew distracted from my task, looking at, looking at the toys on the floor that needed to be picked up, the unfinished schoolwork, the younger children who needed to be bathed. Her deep, even breathing would call me back to the moment only to find her eyes closed in sleep, one hand braced against the window to cradle her head. I grew unhappy with our life. I was tired of getting ice cubes from the freezer when I wanted ice cream. I was tired of never getting the new dress for that first day of school. I was tired of gnawing on the bone in the soup when I wanted meat for myself and my grandma. One evening, I studied my face in the mirror 
wishing my teeth were straight. I came out of the bathroom and said to my mom and dad, I want braces, can I have them? My mother looked up from nursing my baby sister and said, we don't have any money, maybe next year? My father looked up from my toddler sister, he was bouncing on his legs and said, I wish we could get you braces, me knob, but we can't right now. My grandmother looked up from her special stool by the big window. Kalia, she said, look at me. Kalia must be a nickname. I turned to her in the glow of early evening. The sun was low in the sky and its golden light fell on her face. Grandma asked, is my smile not beautiful? In that moment, I could see all the times my grandmother had smiled at me. I could taste cold ice cubes that melted summer's heat from our tongues. The sweetness of the hard peppermint candies and the deep flavors of the bone broth in the bowls of boiled greens. Even now, I can still see my grandma's single tooth, white against the shadows, standing tall in her open mouth. Her smile was the most beautiful thing. Oh, I love that gentle book. I hope you enjoyed it too. Till next time, take care.